Hello and welcome. This is Harry and you're listening to The Lit Podcast, a show where we speak with New York City event hosts and their stories. Uh, joining me this week is Yerk and to talk about what he does here in Brooklyn. So welcome hey. to the show. How are we doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm alive considering the situation out there, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're all just like staying alive. Like that song, right? Like the song, yeah. <laughs> the Bee Gees. Bee Gees for life. Yes. Um, I guess I wanted to lead with this question. So what's the story behind your name? I, it's, I think it's very interesting. And My so, name. Yeah. So, yeah, Yerk. So um, funny thing is just like, it's kind of a, uh, a clue to what my name is. And it's, uh, it's kind of a mystery. So um, it's just an alias I use where... It's so uh, there's not much to go on, but that's pretty much the story. Okay. It's a clue it's a clue to my real name. I'll leave it at that. All right. And then could you tell us a little bit more about well, what exactly is your event? And how did you what's the like the backstory there? Like how did you end up doing this stuff? How did how did you end up being in like New York? Well, I mean if I mean it all, all goes back to uh when I used to live in Florida, I actually um, originally from Puerto Rico, San Juan, Rio Piedra. Uh, and we, you know, I started just DJing like for just high school parties. Like it was all reggaeton parties. So I just kind of started as a, uh, a reggaeton DJ. And uh, this was back in like 2005, right when like uh, reggaeton was really blowing up. And like, it was just like, I mean, anywhere you went. It doesn't matter what kind of state radio station it was. It was just like uh, reggaeton was playing everywhere. And like we would do house parties. Um, and, you know, uh, we have a, what we call uh, Paris de Marquesina. That's kind of like the, the, the theme of what it was. Because usually back in, in Puerto Rico, you would do these parties where like everyone just had, it was so hot that you would just do them like, in, you know, in, in a Marquesina, which is just a driveway. So um, we kind of took that in, uh, we were doing it in central Florida and I was doing a lot of those. It was me and a buddy of mine. And then we just, I just started promoting events and just doing a bunch of these, uh, uh, reggaeton parties, like in skating rings and, and, and a bunch of uh, community centers and yeah. And then, uh, I ended up moving to uh, New York, uh, for various reasons. And then, yeah, I just kind of continue it. Um, I kind of, moved to do more techno stuff and more into like house and other other areas of electronic music but i still continue doing reggaeton but yeah it's kind of like what kind of you know it kind of started as a as a fun thing that i was just doing in high school and then you know i was already kind of producing music on the side so uh, yeah okay so then it sounds like you started off in puerto rico and then yeah. you did more of that stuff in in florida and then you ended up here in New York. Yeah. That's cool. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn in la casa. <laughs> and could you maybe explain a little bit more about kind of like the progression and what genres you, you, you like to play? Yeah. I mean, you know, it all started with uh, 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 reggaeton. I mean, that was the thing where I, you know, grew up listening to that. So a lot of my, you know, early, uh, you know, starring career in DJing was just all that. I mean, that's hundred percent all I did. So, uh, but I was, I always had a fascination for um, like in Puerto Rico, we had, you know, my influences are reggaeton, obviously, you know, dance hall reggae, because it was just always playing there. You always listen to it. It was just always play with uh, reggaeton. And then what we would call club music. So like club music would just be like what other people will classify either techno house or whatever. So it was all kind of mixed together. And I kind of continue touching on from that route from like back home where, you know, that was like what we call club music. And this is like a lot of the music that was coming out, you know, in the, in the late nineties and early two thousands. And this is where like, there was also an explosion of like, you know, kind of about like electronic music became like kind of semi mainstream in a way. And mm -hmm. like every, every kind of like pop music had a, you know, almost like a house sound to it or almost like some kind of like, you know, techno electronic influence. So, you know, I got, I got kind of into it there because it, you know, I listened to a lot of the music coming out of Detroit and it was a big influence on me for like music wise. So, uh, 
yeah and it, you know that's kind of my progression it's, it's like i have a lot of kind of roots of music that i like um my sister played the piano at home so I, I i like a lot of classical music myself then my dad would play a lot of 60s music he liked the beatles a lot so i like a lot of music from the 60s as well 70s as well and then i have like that you know spanish influence so like it's a, a salsa merengue so it's like yeah it's it, it's all crazy but <laughs> it, as far as stuff i play it's stuff that touches all those elements so i would do a lot of housey stuff that had a lot of like latin flavor and influence there uh and and some of the what would you know you would call uh you know detroit techno specific stuff that was really hard hitting too as well and you know i try to just kind of blend all those elements and you know i don't like to say that i play one kind of thing it's just whatever would fit that vibe or whatever that um uh was kind of you know people were vibing with you know that's I, that's what i kind of would play so yeah i'm always down to like you know they're they're you know you probably see me play that i might start playing house one day and then yeah. at the end of the night i'll start playing reggaeton yeah. and it's yeah, like we're gonna we're gonna get yeah. into that definitely so yeah it's 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 uh i don't like to uh stick to one thing could you tell me, can you, can you remember any like early memory that sort of really got you started? Is there any like particular memory that, that you can remember that sort of was like your moment when you were like, I want to, I want to do this. Like, this is really, really fun. Did you ever have something like that? Like music wise? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. Like, did you ever, uh, like, I remember using like Limeware back in the day a lot. And, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too, like I, my fascination with music and computers, they were both together. And a lot of it was just, you know, like, you know, back in like early 2000s and like, you know, it was already online and you were using like Limeware, Casa, and, you know, and all the million ones that were out there and you were torrenting music and whatnot. So, uh, I mean, a lot of my, uh, my fascination and inspiration just came from like, just the people around me and the influence that I had, like what my parents were listening to. And then also, um, you know, my parents are, you know, really religious and we grew up in like, in, in the, you know, and if you go to church in like regular, um, you know, uh, in a Spanish church, you're going to have like all your like salsa, you know, style of music is going to be played there. Like you had like a whole band playing. So like you had a big bass, uh you had percussion section so it's like it was almost like a band that would play every sunday so like me growing up seeing that i was like wait i want to get into that and i actually started playing drums and uh uh congos and bongas like early on when i was really young because i got it i introduced early in church where people were playing people were like uh it was like a big band basically so it was uh pretty awesome that i got that experience yeah so it sounds like it's really in your blood huh I, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, I mean, it gets, I remember like, you know, my mom would tell me that, you know, uh, she was like one of those that she would play classical music when we were about, you know, when I was a kid, because they, you know, people thought that would make your kids smarter because they would listen to classical music. I don't know if there's any kind of scientific backing <laughs> into that, but yeah, I was, there was music always playing at home. So yeah, it was definitely an influence. All right. And then could you maybe take us fast forward to... Tell us a little bit more about like, um, like you, you and Broken, right? So we're trying to focus more on New York City and the events that happened here. Yeah, Tell me more about like, so you, we already covered like the early history um, back in Puerto Rico and what kind of like how you got started. Tell me more about like what brought you to New York and kind of like your, what was like that first year like for you? Yeah, so 2013. Yeah, that's when I moved. I remember driving, uh, taking everything from uh, Florida and moving up to New York. Uh, it was just a job opportunity that happened. And uh, I, you know, since I was a kid, I always wanted to move to uh, move to New York. That was like a dream come true. So an opportunity came up and I was like, you know, I'm going to take it. And then when I started, when I moved here, um, I started, um, I met someone that, um, you know, he was, he was a, a DJ as well. And we started, you know, uh, he was a coworker. And we're still, we started throwing parties at our office, which it was pretty crazy. Like we would go to work and we'd do our thing. And then after hours, we just had the whole place to ourselves, and we just had parties and we started like just doing that. And then from there on, I, I, you know, it kind of, uh, this is where I start, you know, 
getting more into the scene here, specifically in Bushwick and just uh, frequenting a lot of the places. And then I, you know, got back into myself, you know, DJing at places and, you know, start uh, going back to, you know, producing music. So, uh, you know, this is when like, if uh, around that time, like, you know, you had output, I don't know if you remember output was around. <laughs> yeah, we, we all remember output. We all remember output. You know, you had Berboten and you had, um, you know, all these places don't exist anymore. They have different names. Uh, well, it's crazy because in New York, there's so much churn, right? So like yeah. the the rent gets really, really expensive for commercial real estate. And there's a really big problem now. If you actually go down New York City, there's so many storefronts that are shut down. Right. And there's a really big concern that that type of, that could be bad for like the local economy, right? So we could go into like a, a downward spiral where like nobody can afford the rent, but then nobody can buy stuff because nobody's selling stuff. And it's, it's really, really bad. Yeah. And to that point, I mean, I mean, just with the current situation now, uh, what that, what the issue I have with this is that now, now you have places like, uh, um, uh, Okay, warning, ramp coming. Uh, you have places where it's, it's it, you know, like now you're going to have these b big corporations buying these places and like, oh, they'll make their own clubs because they're the only ones that can afford some of these places. And now you have, you're going to have, it's, it's not really run by community anymore because some of the, the places like the rent is so ridiculous that you can't have a mom and pop place open up, a, you know, have a, a community, actual community driven club now. It's becoming so expensive that you have, you're going to have like places like, we don't want New York to be like Vegas when you have like just big clubs and like corporations running places. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's not what New York is. You, it's that underground scene that makes it great. And, you know, it's kind of sad at some of the places that, you know, were here when I moved in 2013, which I had a lot of great time, a lot, uh, you know, and not, not really around, not anymore. around anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just walk anywhere in Bushwick, you'll see a place that was there um you know I, I you know silent barn i was walking around there before, you know that was a place that was pretty dope gone the globe that place is gone like a lot of the dui places just gone because it's you know rent it's crazy well i think i think just side note i think the glove was never legal anyway so <laughs> <laughs> they're always like kind of like yeah. you're not sure if this is the last night so <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough but like you know it's i don't know I think there might be making a comeback, but that's the rumor. Yeah. Well, I'd love to, I'd like to cover like some of those speculations too in the, in like this, uh, in this podcast with people. Sure. What are they thinking about kind of how things would, would be after, after COVID. So for those that are listening, maybe sometime in the future right now, it's, uh, what is it? May, May, 2020. We're still in quarantine during 15, COVID. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty tough. Um, I was going to ask before I forget, because we'll go back to quarantine. But before sure. I forget, um, what what neighborhood did you end up in when you first moved to New York? So when I moved, I uh, I actually started, I moved to uh, I was like around uh, uh, like downtown and like by around Wall Street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like really awkward place to go to. Um, and I got a really cheap deal out there, I could think, because you know, that's, uh, was, I think it was after Sandy that a lot of those apartments no one really wanted because some of them got flooded and whatnot. So I got a good deal on that. Then I ended up moving to Prospect Park after it because I hated it there. Um, I was kind of close to uh, Clinton Hill, I would say, mostly. Yeah. But um, well, I ended up, I was always in Bushwick. So it's like, it was just, it was like, why am I doing this? And I eventually moved to yeah. Bushwick. Like, you know. I remember, um, so we... We we met at um, at a local bar called Rebecca's, right. and we started started becoming friends there. I remember one time just like shooting the shit outside of Rebecca's. I you were talking about how you were always spending time in Bushwick, and that it just it made sense for you to move to Bushwick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 kind of crazy. I mean, they're just the scene here is so good that I'm so lucky that I can just like you know, if you live in Bushwick, you have you know, there's so many good places you can go, like, and, uh, you know, if you want to rave on a Monday night, like, you can do it at, <laughs> you can do it in Bushwick. <laughs> there's, there's no excuses here. Uh, so, yeah, the scene here is great. Yeah. Just, it just made sense. And 
let's see. So you started off in, in Manhattan, went to uh, further south in Brooklyn, yeah. and now you're here in, in Bushwick. Yeah. And I was wondering, like, maybe let's, let's, let's cut to the chase and start talking about what is your event? So yeah. um, what is it? I think you have multiple kind of um, different efforts. Could you maybe mm -hmm. uh, talk, touch on them all and, and explain yeah. kind of what you're doing? Yeah. So I've been kind of, um, you know, trying to stay sane during this quarantine. I've been doing a lot of live streams and a lot of these are kind of spontaneous, to be honest. So um, if uh, most of them are happening through uh, Instagram. So if you just follow me on your, your music, so it's Y-U-R-K and then music on uh, Instagram, you, you might just get a notification that I'm doing something there. And then the other thing is I'm, I've been, you know, you know, working on a lot of just producing music now, now that we're stuck at home, uh, you know, I'm, I've been kind of getting busy on working on music and uh, just, you know, I have some projects coming up uh, hopefully soon. And I just released something on my Bandcamp. So if you go to, uh, again, it's the same thing, York Music at Bandcamp or just up in York, you'll find me. And uh, yeah, I have uh, just a few releases that I have there and just, you know, trying to get that out there and uh, share. And, you know, also, you know, I, I'm always on, you know, looking for opportunities to do, to do events, but right now we can't really do actual physical events, obviously, because of the situation. But, um, you know, uh, there's always, there was always a, a monthly gig happening at Rebecca's, but right now, obviously, uh, we'll have to wait. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd love to hear more about, so like, I have listened to your music and obviously I'm a fan. Um, could you maybe describe more about, and you, so you have different, different things. There's also organized disorder. Right. I don't know if you want to touch on that and what that is. Yeah, sure. Organized disorder pretty much was kind of the birth of the, of the parties and events that I was throwing. Uh, it started as kind of like a promotional uh, uh, a promotional idea of just throwing parties, which it was first originally called False Flag. Then it, I kind of turned it into what it would be a record label, where the idea is just, uh, it's not only just a, uh, like a promotional and an event uh, uh, organization, but it's more going to be a, a, a platform for people to release music. And, you know, the idea is for, you know, for me to release my own stuff through it, but also to work specifically with people in here in uh, locally. So, uh, yeah, so that, it's just a record label and, 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 uh, and well, it was, it, it is an event when, whenever we can do events again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember. So you, so you have an Instagram for that you promote it on there. Yeah. And I've been to, I like the flyers that you make to kind of like promote that stuff. Yeah. I like how you, it's not just you. So you have kind of like a short list or you're developing this like roster of, of fellow DJs. And so for people that have never been to one of your parties, could you, and are just listening, could you maybe just describe what is that? What is the scene? What is the vibe at, yeah. at your, at your kind of like your live shows, kind of like what are the genres that are played? Kind of like what, uh, what's the appeal there? Yeah. Uh, when this first just to just, so. Uh, the whole gen genesis of all, all of this was to kind of build a party, like not just another collective of group of people touring parties, because we have plenty of those already. My first original idea was to create a, what would be a place where DJs that don't play with e usually with each other will get together and play. So it's, uh, the idea is not to um, be one specific, it's not a party to be known to be a techno party or a, you know, a drum and bass party or a, reggaeton party is it's it's no it's it's different so every time it's going to be a uh, different collections of people and it's usually mixing different people they haven't played with each other um and it's a good way to um to kind of bring people together that haven't really you know interacted with each other i feel that sometimes we have our own bubbles in the parties that we throw and you kind of see the same people so i'm always trying to take people from different places different djs from different areas and uh and get them together and that's honestly the kind of like what makes it great because you know you'll the night stop my start with someone playing a lot of like very soulful you know house and then we might progress into like more hard techno and you know it kind of you know every every event is different um uh and the last one we had we had um 
you know, uh, a lot of house and then, but a lot of like disco too. So it was, you know, very, uh, you know, very funk and very danceable and then a lot of Latin influence. And, you know, so it's, it's always different because it's always mixing different styles, different people that play different, that have different selections. And when you put them together, it's just, it's always a very, um, it, it's, it makes for a good experience because there's always high energy. There's always uh, different sounds and vibes clashing in, and it's, it makes it interesting. It's not, you know, you go to one place and it's just one style of music, and which is great if you, if you like that, but you always get uh, different styles going in and changing. So, yeah. Right. So people should go to your Organized Disorder event series. Yeah when it's possible in the future yeah we usually um, announce everything through there um hopefully uh you know if we get <laughs> get out of this soon i was gonna say that people should look out for that event series if they're looking for like um kind of like a more eclectic it sounds like yeah um dj experience so like you said it would be sometimes disco sometimes how sometimes harder techno but what um what i find interesting though is that at the end of the day you're still curating it right so you are um you're the one putting promoting or like listing those djs um could you maybe talk more about how how do you how do you get these connections with other djs how do you find djs to to um play um at your at your events um and kind of yeah. like what are you what are you looking for there because i i, I really believe that you're curating that you're you're, yeah, you're you're the one ultimately saying, "Hey, please play at my thing." What are you looking for? Um, yeah, for yeah I, I I'm just a uh, I'm a I'm the I'm a fan of the scene, I, so I'm always going to events and uh, you know everyone that has usually played for one of these shows, I've probably been somewhere and I'm like, man, this person is just on and I'm feeling the vibe and it's just you know I'm like you know that needs to happen and then I just go talk to them. That's basically it. You know, a lot of it is just seeing people play live and seeing them out there. And because and, there's something about people that can play music, but there's something about people that can read the crowd and then actually just, you know, when you when you see someone that can read the crowd and they can, you know, they can they can understand what's what's working and what's not, and they just keep pushing on the buttons on the crowd, what's working, and it's just like when I see that, it's like, man, that's great. That I love the energy. I like that. Then you know, it's it's those are people I like to bring because it's, it's, you know, they, it's, it's all about the people. It's not really so much about the DJs. It's about keeping everyone moving. Right. Okay. So you know? it's, safe, it's safe to say that the, the DJs that you curate there, they can read the crowd and it's a, it's a good, it's a good party. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of it is just, I go somewhere and I see them playing and it's just like, yo, this is great. And I'm vibing with it. And it, you know, a lot of it is, it's, it's not, it's not so much on, uh, you know, uh, like, it, you know, like with the style of music, it's just like, it's just like, if just the vibe is great, like, it's, it, you know, it could be anything. That's why, that's why, you know, there might be people that might play like, you know, a lot of disco, they might be people that might play a lot of like, you know, electro or some drum and bass. It just, it doesn't really matter. It just, you know, it's, it's about keeping, keeping a good set going. Okay. And then uh, going back to kind of like your, your personal music. So in addition to DJing other, other genres like house and techno, and it seems like you're a really great DJ that can uh, make a party happen. But in addition to that, you see, I know that you have released a couple of, I don't know if they're EPs or discs or. I would consider EPs if you want to get technical, I guess EPs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Could you talk maybe about like, so that that's not organized disorder. That is that is York music, and so maybe is that fair? Is that accurate? Well, it it, it kind of. I mean, you know, organized disorder is the label. So um, what I'm doing is a lot oh, of this the label. Yeah, it's a label. So a lot of the stuff that I'm, you know, I have stuff that I produce myself that I would just release on my Bandcamp. But I do have what um, one EP that was released to organized disorder, which it was my uh, uh, the last EP I did. Um, uh, last year, um, place not found. So that one was uh, first one that came out on organized disorder. But it's it's uh, yeah, everything we just say technically is going out through that through that label. Yeah, I'd love to talk about this um, this album you released. I listened to it. I I can describe it. I can give it a shot describing it. But I'd love to okay. hear. I'd love to hear you describe it. Um, what is what is that genre? What are you shooting for in? Yeah. In, in that that's to me that's like more like more pure art 
yeah. um, instead of performing. Yeah. So one thing to notice, a lot of the stuff that I do is I, I try to perform live. So a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, the, these tracks are done. It's, it's a moment that was captured. That was a performance. So uh, what do you mean? So meaning that, you know, there's different ways of producing things. You can produce something where it's um, you sitting down and you write this composition and it's written in a software where you can just, you know, uh, you know, you can tweak and you can do things. A lot of the stuff is, uh, that I work on, it's, it's outside of a, a DAW, what it was, would be called a software. And I do a lot of it um, in, in what's a modular setup, which everything is set up in its own modular. modular uh, like you have a piano, you have a drum machine, and you have different components. So th the way that I'm recording it, I have a, a, a track once, obviously, once I've worked on it and I have it sounding good. I actually play it live and I record it live. Like I'm playing the actual sequences and I'm doing the, the actual um, changes myself at the moment. I record it and it's all like all a performance that I was done. You know, I kind of play the track live in a sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me because I've, I've actually been following you on, on your Instagram and I have listened to the actual, the actual uh, album on, on Bandcamp. Yeah. I was, how was, uh, so I saw that you did the 30 days of, of, of Yerk or was it 30 days of performing? <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. Was, that was for January, I think. Could you yeah. tell me more about what that was and how did you feel at the end of it? Yeah, so that's a, that's a challenge that's been going on. on it's called January Challenge and that's been going on for a few years, which is just, just have to, there's no actual rules or anything, but it's just, it's a challenge to create a brand new track every day. And it's uh, either you just make a composition, it can be very simple. Uh, it could be a pattern of music that you just create. And then, you know, I take it, you know, I, I, like, I like challenges where it, they kind of push me. And this is one of them where I, I really try to make up a, a new track every day. And then once I have it ready, then I perform it and I record it and then I have it out there. And it's, you know, you have to do a track for each day. So it's, it's kind of crazy because you have to like think about a new idea each time. So it's, 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 it's a good exercise to start the year because it kind of like, it's a good, uh, uh, I would say a, um, a good way to push myself in a way to, to, to produce and to create and to actually um, uh, force myself to try different things. So, it, you know, a good time to experiment. So it's, it's, uh, I like it. It's interesting. And it's, uh, it's my second year doing it. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of great ideas that come out of it. Yeah. I, that I didn't know. I didn't know it was your second year. Yeah. Um, I thought it was more something like a New Year's challenge type of thing. So. No, no, no. It's it's just a every year. You know, a lot of people do it online, and there's a hashtag that you can follow January, and then you know you'll see a lot of people doing it, uh, and it's uh, you know you'll see them on you know YouTube or Instagram or whatnot, and it's just you know anyone can just come in, do your own track, and then you just have to do one every day. <laughs> did you did you get any good gems out of those uh 30 days of of jamming i did i did i i actually released uh three tracks that actually came out of there which it was a uh, uh something i released in the beginning of this month uh which i released under my band camp under uh it's called delay tech which is going to be kind of like the style of music that i'm calling so when you're talking about like the influences of my album kind of the influence of like what is that kind of music and I'm curious what you would describe it as because you never told me. So you call it, you're calling it delay tech? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the idea. I'm not saying that I'm doing my own kind of music, but it's kind of the idea of, of the style of music that I'm doing. It's very influenced on a lot of elements of using delay mm -hmm. and tech because it's just techno and that's kind of, you know, uh, the two roots mainly of influences. Yeah, you know, like it's um some people like to operate with do their art through a constraint. And that yeah. sounds like a like a constraint on your on your art. Um so using a, a delay effect. Yeah, um, I mean it's 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 kinda of, so I'm talking on the influences, it's more like a uh a lot of influences in dub, obviously, because um uh because of my uh, appreciation for uh reggae. And so there's a lot of use of delay effects and a lot of use of uh, um, reverb and whatnot. So um, that's kind of like 
an influence there in itself, just you would call dub music. I see. Uh, did you get any, did you, were you surprised at any point uh, during January? Like, did you learn something new? Yeah, I mean, every every time I, it's it's always interesting when you're forced to create and you're you're putting yourself in a in kind of a deadline to do something, you you start trying out different things. You know, I, I've learned new new tricks from like some of the gear that I have. And it's, it's always good because you, you find a new trick. You find a new, oh, wait, I, you know, if I hit this, if I apply this setting to this one filter and then I do this this way, then I get this down. And then it's like something new that you discover. Um, you're trying to get different sounds, try different things. So it's, it's always a good, uh, it's always a good way to force yourself to learn something new. So yeah, there's, there's always, I, I come up with different new ideas, new tricks, but I can't share them. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not. You have to come to the show to see them. <laughs> yes. The let's see. What um what's what's the favorite place you ever played at? Because I know you've played at several places around um Bushwick at least that I know yeah. of. And I'm curious to see like what's I, your I, what's your personal favorite? Because I know you've played all around the world actually. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't even touched on that. Uh so I, I don't know. Last year we had a pretty dope party. It was um uh it was this was a three dollar bill and it was actually in the open and i don't know if you went to that one but that was when i did an old reggaeton party i missed and, it <laughs> and i mean that party was so great and i mean there's a lot of great venues that i played as far as like sound systems and whatnot like bossa nova has a great sound system in there um uh mood ring has a great sound system um you know it's, you know good 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 vibe there um you know Four four four, may you rest in peace. Which is now, <laughs> well, now it's mood ring. Now it's mood ring. More mood ring part two. Uh, mood ring know, part two. Yeah, <laughs> episode but, uh, two. Yeah, episode two. I always like like those events that are live. They're in the open, so that was one that was great. Uh, and I would say um, last, uh, you know, last year I played at uh, I did an actual live set where I was just playing live music, and this is more of an ambient live set, which is kind of like the other kind of music i like i like a lot of ambient music that's another influence and i was just playing in governor's island we were playing in the just in in the in i was just playing in the open and the weather was great i mean it was just awesome i think that's it's really hard to top that was that for governor's ball or just at, at the island no it was just it was uh it, it was just an event that was just happening there for ambient music and i just got invited to play it was in the, it was just at governor's island yeah it was like one of those, um, like, you know, if, if you've been to Governor's Island, there's that area where you have a lot of houses. And then uh, there you have like a big patio area where a lot of people can just like sit down and picnic. Uh, we just had a sound system there and it was very like kind of old school. You just bring your own sound system, you bring your gear and then, uh, yeah, you just play live. That was, it's really hard. BYO, to BYOG, be, bring your own yeah. gear. <laughs> everything, everything. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, and then you have to bring all your gear and you have to go and take the boat, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. So that, was, that was fun. I'm surprised you didn't mention Jupiter Disco as one of your top places because that's one of my top places. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Jupiter and Disco, it's great. The, the sound yeah, system the, there, it's in the vibe of that place is... Yeah, that was that was like the last place I played before... Uh, it's like it's it's like a it's like a it's like something out of <laughs> it's like something out of Blade Runner that place. Yeah, and they really have like the the, they have the terminal on behind the where they yeah. have their menu, and then it's always like a like if like if you're on a Linux terminal or something, where it's like the text coming in. Uh, they do empanadas there, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know about the empanadas. I knew oh, about yeah, like yeah. Uh, they have a really like interesting drinks uh yeah lots of custom drinks and they're all like sci-fi themed right right um, right yeah that, that um, place they, is very special yeah they have a rotary mixer which is awesome uh which instead of having a slider uh for volume control is a rotary mixer so it's look it up online you you know what i mean <laughs> i'll google it <laughs> it's uh it's pretty badass um that that's actually like you know that that's just on equipment wise i was just geeking out on it it's just very nice to play on that and and just they do have beautiful like custom it looks to me custom made uh speakers which look just beautiful yeah. um 
But yeah, that was, was um, the, that was the last place before uh, shelter. Before shelter quarantine. <laughs> so yeah. how's uh so how are you doing with quarantine then? Um, it, I I feel like it kind of snuck up on everybody. It was all all of a sudden people are like, you can't you stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more drinking. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, no more drinking, right? Um, I don't know if it's it was at first. Um, I was more concerned about the situation with like, you know, the uncertainty of like, how serious is this thing? Am I at risk? Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, on the side, I, I can, I work as an engineer and I can, I've been working remotely already. So it was, it was not a big deal for me to stay at home and be, because sometimes I'll work from home. Uh, it, so that was not that much of a, of a, of a drastic change. Um, I actually was, you know, not going to the city as much anyway. I, I was mostly in the neighborhood, so it was great. But it's just everything closing is just different. Um, I remember a lot of places first was just fifty percent capacity, and then by then that that lasted what like a, a weekend, and then after everything's like, no, we're closed. It was quick. Yeah, was yeah, quick. I think so. People were like dilly dallying with it, but then Cuomo was like, nope, like everything shut down. Uh, even the parks were shut down, which was very surprising because yeah. I I personally started, I, I used to go to the gym a lot mm-hmm. and like now that's closed. So then I was like, well, okay, I could probably do workouts in the park with like right. the, the, the bars and stuff, but even that was shut down. So I was very disappointed about that. Yeah. I mean, and uh, same here. I mean, I, you know, it's part of my like routine to just go, go do the gym every other day. And it's, it's, it, yeah. After that closing and then everything else is like, I guess I'm stuck home. I can't, the parks are closed. So yeah, I just run now. Like that's my thing. Just go for a run. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, it's been, it's been kind of uh, interesting because uh, you know, now, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, we're all in, in this together. So it's like, it's interesting to see how everyone's, you know, reacting to it. I, you know, I have friends that, uh, you know, moved and, and, and went somewhere else. You know, there's people that have stayed here and there's people that are taking it really seriously. Some people that are not as much. Um, I've just been staying, honestly, by myself and just working on producing music. <laughs> it's just That's the way to stay sane. A lot of Netflix, you know. <laughs> I'm really, I mean, I'm hoping that a lot of people use it as an opportunity to, like, get all the things that they always said they never had time There's no do. excuse. There's no excuse. You want to learn a language, do it now. You want to learn how to code, do it now. You want to start working on music, okay? You want to get you know, a new hobby, do it now. Honestly, it, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one, that's like the, uh, that's all perspective, right? Like that's one way of looking at things like, okay, I'm stuck at home, I can't do anything. Well, I mean, if you still have internet, I mean, there's just, I don't know, you can still take classes online. There's still things you can do, so. I don't know. I mean, I'm, that's, I'm trying to stay positive. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, even this podcast is a result of kind of like doing it now. Right. So right. Um, why not do things from, from home? Yeah. Uh, going back to your art. So like, what's the, can you tell us like a time when, when you got like a compliment or like, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten that like made you feel like all fuzzy inside about your, your performance or your music? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there was one that happened not too long ago where I was like, I was actually, uh, I was in the middle of my set and, uh, you know, I was going to play a track by this one guy, which, uh, uh, guy or girl, I'm not going to name who it is. Person. Person. Don't assume, the, don't assume their gender. Man. <laughs> um, and the funny thing is, I, yeah, you gotta be careful. Then <laughs> I, I, um, I actually see that person coming in while I was about to, you know, play that track. And I was like, oh man, that's weird. I don't want to play this dude's, you know, this dude's track while he's here. And um, that was an interesting experience because I never had that happen. Uh, and then after the person like just came to talk to me and give me feedback and like, oh, I've been listening to your stuff. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, so, so that was like a fellow music producer or music yeah, um, well, techno I, I artist? Was, Yes. Yeah. It was just someone that I was just in the middle of my set. I'm, I'm about, I'm going through which track I should play next. And I was going to play this one track. And then I look up on the dance floor and I see this person. I was like, Oh wait, this is your track. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Brooklyn, huh? Only in Brooklyn. Only in Brooklyn. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's see. 
I think we'll probably end it there. So for the folks that want to learn more about you, like listen to your music, um, where can they find you? Yeah, I would say everyone just to, uh, if you go to my uh, Instagram, just go to York Music and uh, Y-U-R-K Music. And then uh, I'm linking there to my Bandcamp, which is, uh, you can go to just uh, York Music at Bandcamp. And, uh, yeah, I'll have all my releases in there and, uh, you know, follow me on, on Instagram and I'll be uploading any, any upcoming releases and whatnot. They'll be go, going in there. Uh, 